July 12th, 2015. Mateo Darmian beams as he holds up a Manchester United kit, alongside legendary manager Louis van Gaal. I, I know United fans, his stint at your club wasn't legendary, but Big Louie has definitely earned that moniker for all of his other achievements. At least his pitch side actions and quotes were legendary. But anyway, back to the intro. There's many ways up the football mountain. We've spoken about this before when discussing Kolomuani's relatively late rise. And a similar sentiment could be applied when speaking of Matteo Darmian's journey in football. He signed with United from Torino at the age of 25, and across four seasons, he made just 92 appearances. In his final two seasons, he made just 17 and seven appearances, respectively. But skip ahead from there to the present, and you'll find that suddenly Matteo Darmian is 33, playing as a center back and playing an integral role in Inter's run to the Champions League final. Much like his club's run, the evolution of Darmian wasn't to be expected, but it's a welcome story to cap off the season. Hey guys, I'm Adrian. Welcome to another Rabona TV video from yours truly. I am doing this video to put to bed any allegations that I look like Matteo Darmian. That's it. That's the sole purpose of this video. Joking, of course, but thanks for joining me once again. And if you're new here and enjoy this, subscribe for multiple videos weekly. 18 million euros for Matteo Darmian in the summer of 2015, following a great four-year spell at Torino where he improved season upon season, helping Torino to the round of 16 in the Europa League, scoring goals along the way, and splitting his duties as both a right back and a left back, and making the Serie A team of the season. According to Van Hal, his ability to play on both sides was a huge appeal when choosing to sign the Italian fullback. Quote, Matteo is a right-sided fullback with the versatility of also being able to play on the left. He is a strong defender and has the ability to go forward in the attacking positions, which is a fantastic attribute to have and much needed in the fast rhythm of the Premier League. And in those coming days, he would provide some much needed competition to Antonio Valencia. Though an ankle injury to the Ecuadorian winger turned fullback during the 2015-16 season would ensure that Darmian had plenty of playing time under Van Hal, making 39 appearances in his first campaign and smashing a lovely volley in against Crystal Palace for his one goal in a United shirt. With Mourinho's arrival in the subsequent campaign, the elder statesman in Valencia was preferred at right back again, meaning Darmian's opportunities mostly came from playing as a left back when Daly Blind wasn't available. However, perhaps a precursor of what was to come for Darmian, we also saw Mourinho play him in two different positions against Chelsea both times in two different matches. He came on as a sub in a Premier League match, featuring as a center back for the first time in his United career. He would later start as a right center back in a back three as well as Mourinho played with shapes. And speaking of which, when they played with a back three against Chelsea in the FA Cup, Mourinho started Darmian out as a central midfielder alongside Pogba and Herrera. But with every season that passed, his chances were limited further. Mourinho preferred Valencia at right back still, while another winger turned fullback and Ashley Young became the Portuguese manager's preferred choice at left back. It seemed like Darmian fell under the old adage of a jack of all trades and a master of none in the eyes of his managers. Under Solskjaer, after Mourinho left, the same thing, as injuries certainly didn't help Darmian's case, nor did Luke Shaw coming back into form under the Norwegian. In his final season with United, the 2018-19 season, Darmian made just seven appearances for a grand total of 529 minutes. You can always go home, right? And that's exactly what Darmian did, signing on with Parma on deadline day of the 2019 transfer window for just 2.48 million euros. At Parma, he would go on to be a consistent starter, which should come as no surprise really, as Parma, who have since been relegated, were at most a mid-table team in Serie A. They had some fun moments, they had some surprises here and there thanks to a purple patch from players like Gervinho, but ultimately, Darmian seemed like a player that was destined for something greater than a side whose highest finish in three Serie A seasons was 11th. No shade on them, but Darmian was out of place there. He was rescued from Parma in the end, the same way that he arrived, deadline day. One year on from joining them, he was sent on loan to Antonio Conte's Inter Milan in the summer of 2020, and an option to make it permanent was agreed at 3.3 million euros, according to Transfermarkt. Signing with Inter at this time was interesting, as Antonio Conte was buying up former United players all over the place at rapid pace. Lukaku, Alexis Sanchez, and Ashley Young all had joined before Darmian, and given the United rejects were taking over, I mean, I can't speak to how that would feel. I'm not an Inter supporter, but... 
Uncle Sharma, friend of the channel and Inter Milan creator, certainly is. So with that announcement, what were the thoughts amongst Inter supporters? Well, certainly very underwhelming, I would say. Um, there's a, it's quite famous actually now with Inter fans when he was actually signed. You know, when you have the medical and usually you have like, you know, a wave of people outside of the, wherever the center is, the medical center. And Darmian had no one, no one turned up to this guy's, uh, to this guy's medical. So in terms of my feelings, you know, price wise, I think it was like a loan with like a very, very low redemption fee. When you have Conte, it's just like you, you trust the guy, whatever decision that guy makes, just you, you have to back it. So I was like, this is Conte's guy, he's one of his trusted soldiers, 2016 Euro team, he was part of it. So I trust you, Antonio Conte, and I trust you, Matteo Darmian. However, as some stories would point to, there was a long game being played here by Conte and the Inter board when it comes to Darmian's move to the club. From what I, from what I understand, actually, the whole move was orchestrated by Inter that um, hmm. wanted him in Parma for a season to help them. And then, you know, they, he was, they was always agreed that he was going to join them the season after. Undercover Conte and the fellas moving in the shadows like that. I guess that explains some of my amusement, for lack of a better word, surrounding his move to Parma. Or they just didn't want to be seen as United Rejects FC with yet another move directly from United to Inter, hence the stopgap at Parma. Who's to say? Anyway, in that first season with Conte, he was an instant hit, as he once again played in a multitude of positions, a jack of all trades, and under Conte, a master of all of them. And while he may not have been the go-to starter for the center back, left wing back or right wing back positions again, he still managed to chip in with four goals and four assists and proved his usefulness pretty much right away. He came in at the same time that Ashraf Hakimi was there. You know, Hakimi was the big signing, you know, 40 million from Dortmund. You know, I was super excited. That was the hype signing. Everyone turned up for that one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as, as, as you would expect, the guy coming from the German league, uh, that Dortmund team, very attacking. So Hakimi needed a bit of time to adapt. And Conte even said, you know, this guy needs to learn how to play, you know, in, in Italy, in Serie A, tactically, especially. So Darmian actually got a lot more minutes straight away than, than I think most people expected. He's just, he's just one of those players that, you know, most teams need to have. Like any good team needs to have a guy that just can come in whatever position you put him in, whether it's left wing back or right wing back in the case of Mundarmian or, you know, this season he's even become a centre back. He's that Swiss army knife. So he, he became he became an integral, important part of the team straight away almost. And what Uncle Sharma said there about him being a Swiss army knife and a player that every team needs is giving me a lot of Nacho Fernandez vibes at Real Madrid. Funnily enough, Inter have been linked with Nacho, but Nacho is another one of those players that can fill in anywhere along the back line and can even do a job in the midfield. Just a, a true footballer, you know? They don't look out of place in a multitude of positions. And there's a reason why coaches love these guys. You need a hole in your lineup filled, they can do so. And not just a serviceable job, but they can do a great job. They're not just a body that the opponents can exploit as a weakness. Yeah. So, this is the part that you've surely been waiting for, the part where we speak about Matteo Darmian becoming a starter in what is definitely not his favoured position for a team that is now competing in the Champions League final against his former side's local rivals. Now, having watched through this video to this point, then you'll know that Darmian has been used as a right back, a left back, a left wing back, a right wing back, a dabbled in the midfield. He played in a back three under Mourinho once, and that was definitely a sign of what was to come. As Darmian has matured as a player, he's become a great center back for Inter. How has that conversion gone? Was it mostly out of necessity, or was this something that you think Inzaghi identified his strengths and thought, you know what? this might work with Darmian as a center back. I think it's a combination of those things. So I think the three at the back formation, the right center back of the left center back, kind of these days, especially if you're playing kind of progressive football like Interdu under Inzaghi, you need this kind of hybrid player that's kind of comfortable covering wide areas, which are, you know, him being a full back wing back, he's very happy to do. And I think he kind of reminds me of kind of, if you know, if people want to compare him to kind of what Cesar Aspiliqueta became for Chelsea, kind of that guy in that role, because he's he's DC, he's not amazing on the ball. I don't think he, I don't think we've ever seen Darmian even do a step over. I can't I can't remember if he's ever even done a step over in his life. So you know he doesn't need to do as much attacking wise, but he's you know he's not too bad at progressing the ball, keeps it neat and tidy. 
playing out from the back and then you can also go up once in a while maybe overlap here and there so it just combines all of his strengths picturing him doing a step over my mind immediately goes to those darwin nunez-esque uh, step overs <laughs> but uh, who knows maybe it'd be a little <laughs> yeah a little bit whippy maybe it'd be smoother than we think <laughs> hey man I still have love for Darwin. Like I always said, he's a year two signing for Liverpool. And if I'm wrong about that, then he's a year three signing. No, I'm joking. But anyway, back to Darmian. What makes his story all the more interesting, I know, hard to do after going to United and never truly settling, then going back to a mid-table relegation bound side in Serie A via Parma, then to Inter, where he is slowly converted to a right center back position, is how this all fits with Inter. When you look at this Inter side, you have Denzel Dumfries down the right. The man struggled at first at Inter, but has recently, like the rest of the squad, caught some great form and made up for those previous defensive lapses. You have Darmian, someone who recently changed position, playing next to Dumfries. Then on the other side of Darmian, you have Acerbi, who was pushed out of Lazio, but at 35 years old, he's been massive for Inter. They have this trio of players that were either converted to a different position or unwanted at their previous club or had major question marks over their head regarding their ability to defend. And yet, Inter have won not one but two domestic cups, as well as making the Champions League final after not conceding a single goal in two of their three knockout round ties. Shout out Benfica for scoring three times against them, I guess. Still lost, but hey, we tried. Now, of course, a video on Inzaghi is needed to tie all of this together, but from an Inter supporter's point of view, when you first saw these individuals playing together, you couldn't have thought, yeah, these three, Acerbi, Darmian, and Dumfries, they're taking us to the Champions League final. Dumfries, Darmian thing, yeah, it's... It work, defensively, it works. Like we've seen it, like, uh, you know, against Kavara Scalia, or, you know, they've come up against, like, really, you know, important players like, you know, Rafael Leao. Uh, and they've done well in big games against Porto, against Benfica. They've, they've, they've developed an interesting partnership that's very, firstly, it's solid defensively, which Inter have been more, in the Champions League, we've definitely been more a bit more defensive, a bit more solid than we've been in Serie A. But how does Uncle Sharma see him when it comes to his style? He likened him a bit to the type of player Espilicueta became at Chelsea. And that tracks, doesn't it? A fullback that's converted to a wing back, certainly capable of delivering a decent ball in now and then, but more just solid defensively and can also play in a back three. Or as Uncle Sharma says, I think he's plucky. I think that's the best way to describe him. You know, he's, he's a plucky center back. Like once in a while, he does get beaten, you know, 1v1 maybe here and there, but he manages to recover. You know, he's not Milan Skriniar, obviously, like as well as he's actually done. And how consistent he is, he's still, you know, obviously not Milan Skriniar, who's probably for a while, maybe the best center back in Serie A. But he, he has other qualities, like he is quicker, he's better at lateral movement, he's good with the sliding tackles. And on the ball, as I said, he's not he's not flashy, he doesn't really go for any, you know, 40 yard pingers or, you know, he doesn't really go for any intricate through balls. He keeps it neat and tidy, you know, he's probably going to keep possession when he's got the ball. But that's the thing, Bastoni's on the other side, he's the one who's got the job to do that on the left centre back. So I think it's that's just his job to be the steady, reliable right centre back. And sometimes that's all a manager needs because a well-balanced side will have players that complement each other's deficiencies. As Bastoni does when it comes to distribution and chance creation from the back line in Inzaghi's tactics. And look, this group of players may not have many in their first 11 that would make it into a combined 11 between them and City, but Inzaghi has done well to construct Inter as such that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, which has given rise to players like Darmian, whether they're playing in their preferred position or out of it, whatever his preferred position may be at this point. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Look, I love these kinds of players. We have one of our own at Benfica and Frederick Orsenes, guys who are just as comfortable playing on the wing, as a fullback, as a central midfielder, as a center back. They can do it all. They're just all round solid players who at times have seen their career suffer because their versatility allows them to fill in out of position, but often a specialist is brought in to play ahead of them. It's nice to see Darmian flourish in spite of this. If you enjoyed this one, then a like is always appreciated. But aside from that, guys, I'm Adrian and enjoy the football. Ciao.